listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. As you just heard, this season, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra has encouraged us to experience the magic of the music. In their penultimate Saturday Classics concert coming up this weekend, the WSO welcomes award-winning American pianist Michelle Kahn to perform Liszt's Piano Concerto No. 1, in addition to Florence Price's Concerto in One Movement, bookended by Weber's over- Overture to Oberon and Stravinsky's Suite from the Firebird. Uh, a fiery and, and magical evening of music indeed. Joining me this morning is music director Daniel Reiskin to tell us more. Hello! Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Simon. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, we certainly are overdue in having you for a chat. So thrilled you could join me this morning. I, I can't quite believe it, but this the the penultimate Saturday Classics concert, and I'm I'm wondering if we could just begin by chatting a little bit about how you might characterize this 2023-24 season. Your 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 sixth as as music director with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra thus far. Well, time does fly, indeed. I can't imagine it's uh, the sixth season already. I I feel it's uh, also you know, crossing the uh, the equator of it, so it's it's a way of moving towards the um, the end of the season. But for me, you know, if I look back at the times with WSO and my first one and a half season, then pandemic happened, mm-hmm. and we were in it. Then we were slowly emerging from it. Well, basically, I feel it's it's a little bit of a rebirth season in a way. It's the first season after a long while that we were operating normal conditions on stage without this one meter, one and a half meter, or two meter separation. We didn't have any uh, conditions or restrictions imposed on attendance of our audiences. The audiences were returning with larger and larger numbers. And I still encourage everyone to, uh, you know, remember if they were going before and uh, were reluctant now to find their way to um, the concert hall and other venues where we perform because uh, the joy we experience, uh, all of us, uh, you know, in performing in front of the uh, full hall and the energy that comes out of it, uh, you know, interaction between the stage and the hall is nothing short of magic. And talking about magic is, I think that the, this week's uh, program underlines uh, kind of two currents. One is a little bit of a magic and fairy tale and this dream we always need to be part of our life, not to sink in their routine and the other one is stories and narrative and there's so much you know connecting um, the pieces that are going to be performed even the two concertos you know uh, uh, by Liszt and um, uh, Florence Price uh, with Michelle Kahn they're intricately related and uh, and then of course the the fine um, art of uh, fairy tales and dreams um, coming from you know stories of uh, Oberon and Urania and two was the firebird and, and, and princesses and all that. It's a, it's a wonderful way to, um, you know, have a throwback in a history and perspective for the future too. All right, well, let's chat a little bit more about this weekend's program. Um, I, I do want to say the orchestra has been sounding fantastic this season. Wow. I mean, like like you say, it, it's been one of those where the, the restrictions have really come off. You you can really feel the cohesion amongst the players. Sure. All the shows that I've been checking out. And I mean, uh, one other thing that I want to mention before we get to this weekend's show is the fact that there's been so many opportunities to see the orchestra in new ways. Not only Saturday concerts, but also Thursday classics. It, it's been a wonderful season thus far. And again, just a... I mean, we're not done yet. There, oh, there are still a number not. of fantastic performances, and yeah. people should check those out at, at WSO.ca. Uh, but let's get chatting about uh, this weekend's show. Um, it is one that welcomes um, the award-winning American pianist and pedagogue Michelle Can. H- have you ever worked with her before? I didn't work with her before, but, uh, you know, it's it's uh, nothing short of a real revival of music by Florence Price, uh, music, you know, being recorded by Philadelphia Orchestra and mm-hmm. Deutsche Grammophon, the symphonies, the piano concerto is been probably the first uh, go-to uh, work of hers uh, that's uh, gained popularity in the last years. And actually, Michelle Kahn was uh, one of the ambassadors of the work, not only because she herself is an uh, African-American, uh, a wonderful pianist, but also because, um, you know, she. Uh, I, I heard her a recording and I saw her perform <coughs> the work with a number of orchestras. I listened to it. I think she really identifies with the music uh, of Florence Price as a woman, as an African-American musician. And... Uh, Uh, to have her come to Winnipeg with that piece that she's been representing on so many stages is wonderful. And obviously showing it in perspective of where it comes from, where the roots are. I mean, Florence Price, uh, what was she? She was born in the 1880s and and, and lived all the way through uh, 1957. She she represents this... uh, 
you know, the modern times, as we know, being a uh, contemporary of Stravinsky and Shostakovich, but also it, strongly rooted in the musical culture of uh, Liszt, Schumann, Grieg, Brahms, and, and this wonderful um, tradition of uh, juxtaposing, but also merging the styles, you know, mm. from uh, Liszt and, and, and German romantics into uh, the blues and the narrative that became language of Gershwin and, uh, and great American jazz from the roaring 20s through to our time. This is what makes this work, for example, very attractive. And, you know, it ends with ragtime and it has a beautiful blues. And I would even say a spiritual more than the blues in the, in the second movement. And the first movement is so closely related to the ideas of, you know, German music romanticism. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful bridge, I'd say. And, and again, that, that sort of history of music, if you will, in a snapshot, opening with the Liszt Piano Concerto Number no. 1, making its way into the, the Piano Concerto in One Movement by Florence Price. And, and like you say, she's been right at the forefront. Um, Michelle Kahn, that is, has been at the forefront of reviving um, Florence Price's music uh, right from the first performance back in 2016 with the Dream Unfinished Orchestra and a wonderful opportunity for us to hear more of F- Florence Price's uh, fantastic writing. Um, so let's chat a little bit about the sort of fairy tale connections also on the program. You were alluding to this earlier. Um, it's a, a concert that opens with the Oberon Overture by Karl Maria von Weber and then closes with a performance of Stravinsky's Firebird. Talk about a, a, a packed I evening to, of music. I, I, will, I will have to go back even to the last week's concert. Uh, it was the very first time my wife and I actually attended a Harry Potter movie, Live Alone. It was the first time we were actually immersing into the Harry Potter world. Somehow, first time. Somehow, neither both of our kids, so they're <laughs> 20 and 25, or ourselves, you know, we, it was, it was not in our orbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, we didn't read the Harry Potter books. We didn't see the Harry Potter movies. Um, I, I knew more about music to some of the, especially the John Williams ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. more than narrative. So um, it was incredible to uh, be in the middle of this uh, completely sold out Centennial Concert Hall with the WSO playing absolutely amazing. I kept turning to my wife during the performance and said, they sound great. Yeah, I was there on and, Friday. It was fantastic. And, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's, all, it's a handful to play. It's really a lot. And, yeah. this, and, and I look, kept, keep, kept losing track of it sounded very often so much like a really like a soundtrack yeah, exactly. in the yeah, studio yeah. with everything so beautifully clean and timing wise great job anyway <laughs> so this you know in, of course when you plan the season you know you kind of see the lines what happens after what and i thought wouldn't it that be wonderful if during our classics we kind of will pass on this idea of magic world that it was just so obvious during this uh, last weekends with Harry Potter into the world where it actually comes from. Because, you know, if you read the stories about uh, all the wizards and witches and uh, whether it's uh, Cachets and uh, Prince Ivan or it's uh, Oberon, Urania and all, this is basically the narrative that has been simply you know, bend our way and rewritten by anyone who is writing, you know, the, the books of imaginable, I- imaginary fantasy world where it's Harry Potter or Narnia or mm-hmm. other other books, you know, and, and films. So I think that, and I wanted to, you know, lots of m- music that we play, uh, we, even before cinema was uh, invented, we can... Um, feel they have this cineatic character to them because they're so v- visually descriptive you know mm. some some characters where you feel well the starry dust of you know when the the wizard touches something with his magic baton and whatever um, or these you know imaginary evil creatures and stuff and to put this in 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 music and the notes and to see how it's done 200 years ago and now it's a wonderful opportunity to play with the same uh, tools uh, so I, I want to chat um, a little bit more in depth about um, Stravinsky's Firebird. Um, this uh, a really unique work, um, Sergei Diaghilev approaching a young Stravinsky for a new ballet score with the Ballet Russe. It was a sort of hunch Diaghilev had that really paid off in spades. It's based on an old fairy tale, but you know, in, in talking about the stories, you don't necessarily need to know the story to appreciate the music. I mean, this is imaginative, yeah. captivating, da- dazzling writing. But it's also incredibly difficult music, um, like metrically and harmonically. So I'm, I'm curious for you, for, for you as a conductor, 
What, what are the challenges approaching a work like Stravinsky's Firebird? You know, I would say that of all, you know, three famous um, Stravinsky ballets, um, the Rite of Spring, Petrushka, and um, Firebird, the Firebird is, of course, the earliest of them, and it's, uh, and it's um, you know, in a way, the most accessible mm-hmm. and the least complicated in the sense of the language you allude to. It is still very strongly rooted in uh, um, late uh, romanticism and folklore romanticism, s- definitely coming from the hands of Rimsky-Korsakov mm-hmm. and uh, late uh, Tchaikovsky. You know, originally Daglev turned to Ladov, who was famous for his very short, he, brilliant composer, but never wrote anything longer than three, four minutes mm-hmm. with his Baba Yaga and mm-hmm. Kikimura and Enchanted Lakes. Um, and uh, Stravinsky did a hell of a job, but, uh, uh, you know, all the famous tunes uh, w- we associate with fiber this wonderful horn solo in the end or the oboe solo in the in, in the middle in the uh, around dance of uh, princess these are all folk songs mm-hmm. that come from the collection of folk songs that rimsky korsakov had on his dacha and stravinsky you know th- related to rimsky korsakov family so he had a direct uh, source um one thing i always think about is that by all means this music can leave its own life just as a concert piece from stage, but all of these are ballets. Mm-hmm. So I kind of I can't separate the visual from um, the music. And every time I I conduct uh, the, this ba- ballet music, whether it's Rite of Spring or Petrushka or Stravinsky, I uh, or uh, Firebird, I always close my eyes, you know, instinctively, and I see, you know, what's in front of me, these yeah. wonderful costumes, these movements. And, and what I try to do is actually bring this back to music. So when we uh, perform, the audiences will be compelled to actually imagine this dance and this magic world, which is also visual. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in a way a soundtrack too. You know, you, you, there are beautiful cartoons also on the same topic, whether Disney or, or, or old, you know, Soviet um, cartoons. And this is the world you want. It's a little bit about becoming a child for, again, for as long um, as you listen to this music. It's like this wonderful time when we still believe you know, in Wizards and, and Father Christmas and uh, yeah, yeah. That, that the presents that come to us during the New Year and Christmas actually come not from our parents. And we kind of know that at a certain point, but we still want to believe that it's magic that brings us to This is the world we want to, um, you know, bring to life again. And again, this is just so apparent in in the tagline for this 2023-24 season, um, experiencing the magic of the music. And that's going to be on full display this weekend. Uh, No doubt Winnipeg audiences are very excited about this one. Uh, Given that, I was just on the WSO website. Tickets are are limited already for this concert. So if people don't have their tickets, uh, don't delay WSO.ca to get those tickets. Uh, And as if the music uh, wasn't enough to get the people there, uh, also this weekend the WSO is going to be announcing the 2024-25 season. And I, I know you can't. Uh, divulge too much information yet, but can can you give us any indication of, of what we can expect uh, looking ahead to the, the new year? Well, first of all, there's going to be also a lot of magic going <laughs> in the next season. In a way, you know, this is what we we all so much need in our life. If you just look around what happens in the world and in our society, uh, on you know, on all continents, and the wars ra- raging in uh, Ukraine, in Israel, unrest in Africa, uh, tensions in uh, East Asia, uh, nothing short of a civil war again unfolding across the border from Canada <laughs> shortly before U.S. elections. I mean, where do we sto- stop? Where do we go? What's the point uh, where we actually can find our balance and trust and, and some sense of hope? Um, and I think, you know, music in, in our world now, especially because it's so elusive, it's so in concrete in, in terms of, you know, one and only message something sends us, a written text or a slogan or even a picture. Um, I think this is something which becomes increasingly uh, important to us. And the programming itself will, of course, uh, very much uh, underline the, the already established tradition of WSO of allowing everyone to find their spot, their voice, their music, their um, hopes and, 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 and 
loves and attentions in the programs we offer, uh, honoring the diversity, honoring the idea that you cannot constantly revolve around things you already know. Mm -hmm. uh, because things you like, you know, but you would never like things that you don't know. So we try to make people curious. We don't want to scare them away by too many unknown names, but also there will be things that really rely on strong connections, maybe works by very famous and very well-known composers combined with works with na com by composers whose names we don't know, but they very strongly connected to mm -hmm. the others. And that makes that whole thing as a, as a historical perspective and also, you know, like storytelling in terms of passing on. Um, many stories we enjoy, and fairy tales too, haven't been written for centuries before someone actually took idea of doing it. And it was just passing on, you know, word of mouth, whatever you, you, you call it. Um, and, and sometimes music has the same thing, you know. It's not just the music written on pa paper, but the stories behind are as, as much worth as the music itself. And these great soloists coming our way, some, some of them are already uh, well known to us and established. Others are still my deep pockets of great international friendships where I can still go to people and say, you know what, we have a great orchestra and fantastic audience, very exciting city half of the year unlivable conditions because it's incredibly cold <laughs> we don't have money but i love you to come Bec and you know and people do yeah. uh, and i'm happy that my deep pockets of this kind of soloists are still not exhausted so there will be some very established names and some returns and and some who will come for the first time but will be immediately reinvited i already know that because it happened to so many already mm -hmm. and we are planning you know already 25 26 two years from now, and I know that there will be also some people that have been to Winnipeg, or even on my watch already twice or, or thrice, because people really start to love this uh, soloist. Uh, well, can't wait for what's to come. Uh, in the meantime, the penultimate Saturday Classics concert uh, coming up, well, on this Saturday, uh, WSO.ca, the place to go for tickets and details. Again, limited tickets are available. The concert 7.30 p.m. Uh, this Saturday features music of Carl Maria von Weber and Igor Stravinsky, plus Michelle Kahn performing music of Franz Liszt and Florence Price. Uh, all led by music director of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, Maestro Daniel Reiskin. And Daniel, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you very much for having me, Simon.